Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at Ghost Love Candy 2, <laughs> which is like a bad movie title. This is the second version of Ghost Love Candy, uh, which is a game mostly for kids. I mean, adults can play it too, but I'm, I'm kind of reviewing this almost as a kid's game uh, because I feel like that's kind of the target or a, a light family game for families in which you are ghosts scaring kids so you can steal their candy. Um, this is the second version of the game. It's a slight variation on the first one. Uh, you don't even need to know the first one exists. Let's talk about this one. Here's how it plays. In this game, you're going to have a certain number of kids that are plays out of there out of a huge deck of trick-or-treaters, and I'm pretty sure every single one is different. So you'll place out a certain number based on number of players. So in a up to a four-player game, you're going to have six kids out here. Each kid's going to have a random candy put on top of them. Sometimes you have stuff that's not candy, and if you draw one of those, you'll put another candy out there. Each player in the game is going to take a reference card, but the most importantly, on the other side, this is going to tell you at the end of the game how much candy is worth for you. So for this player, lollipops are worth zero, and licorice is worth five. For this person, lollipops are worth five. Gummies are worth zero. Some candy, like a full-size candy bar, of course, is always worth five, but you're trying to collect the candy that will give you the most points. Each player also has a set of ghosts here from one to nine. Each round of the game, players are going to be simultaneously place, placing ghosts down and then revealing them. Whoever plays the highest ghost will go first. If there's a tie, players will draw a kid card here and look at the little tiny number down in the corner to break the tie. When it's your turn, you will place a ghost underneath one of the characters here. So let's say I place it under the love struck girl. First of all, you get the candy that's there above that person. And you'll place it in addition to the two candy that you start with. So you'll be collecting candy as the game goes by. Then you get to take the action on the card if there is one. In this case, there is not one. So let's say the next person to go was Rowdy here, or the orange player. So they go here, they'll take the red candy. Choose a player that went before you in turn order this round. Take a treat of your choice from their stash. The pink person went before them, so they decide to take that full-size candy bar from me. Now, each player is going to do this. At the end of a round, you're going to add a candy to each person who's still on the board. But if somebody goes to a spot, let's say, for example, purple goes next, purple goes here. There's no candy to take. However, the total number they play here, 8 plus 5, 13, is higher than the scare value of the love struck girl. So they'll take that person and they keep them until the end of the game. That's immediately replaced. Now we have a bounty hunter out here. And we'll add candy and so on and so forth. Here's the deal. At the end of the game, most kids are going to be worth minus two points. So you really don't want to scare most kids. In this case, the love struck girl is also minus two, but worth ten points if you also get the vampire or the werewolf in front of you. So there's a few people who are worth points at the end of the game. Like if you get the dentist, each toothbrush in your stash is worth three points instead of minus one. So there's a few that are worth points at the end of the game. But there is a whole ton of different characters that are in this game, all different ones. Which does range a little bit like, yes, obviously I want to dress up like Harry Potter. Not quite sure kids are dressing up like Breaking Bad. But there is lots and lots of different costumes here. And I got to say, I really like the artwork in this game. So everyone's going to be going until they played all nine ghosts from their hand. At that point, the game is over. You will reveal your cards, tally up the points of your candy, check any kids that may be worth points or not worth points, and whoever has the most is the winner. I also, real quickly, besides the rule book's well done, but I do want to point out I really like this bag. That's just a cool bag that comes with the game. Easy enough to fit your hand in and looks like a nice little Halloween bag. And the artwork on all the different cards for the ghosts is also different. Easy to tell them apart both in color and how they look. Okay, so Ghost of Candy 2, first of all, I love the fact that there's a different, every kid is different. There's a ton of different kids in this game. The artwork, I think, is fantastic. I want to give a big shout out to that. I just think it looks, it just looks beautiful. Um, Danny Devine, this is a very simple game he's designed here. There's going to be some luck in the game. So 
for example, you saw that love struck girl. She's 10 points if you see the werewolf and or the, the other creature that she gets it with. And there's, I think, there's Romeo and Juliet in the game, things like that. But that deck is so big, you're going to go through a tiny fraction of it. Those, those combos may never show up. Now, you know that taking these people, but you got to realize that. Also, you know, the, the, sometimes you play numbers down and someone plays the same number as you. So there's a little bit of, you know, opponent randomness or the candies that come out. But that being said, I like it. You have to realize there's a bit of what we call take that in the game because there's a lot of, oh, I'll do this to you, I'll do that to you. And I'm not always a big fan of that, but because this game is so light, and honestly, I would use the word charming on this game. The idea of collecting candy and having candy be worth different values for different players works really well. I mean, licorice might be four for you and five for me, but two to Susan. So Susan doesn't really care about licorice, but she's also watching what we're taking. And sometimes she might take it because she's like, well, I know licorice is five for them. And so I have a choice between licorice, which is two points, and the sucker, which is worth three. I'll take the two points because Tom's collecting a lot of it, so it's probably worth a lot to him. Now, I might be adding more strategery than is actually in this game, um, but the game itself is very short. You're playing those nine cards. The idea of playing a high card, letting you go first, but also having a very high possibility of you over, you know, scaring the kid and getting the kids, and most kids are minus two. Although occasionally you scare, you do that anyway because you want the candy that's sitting on that person. There might be a kid that's worth negative points, but no one takes that, but they keep candy keeps piling up on them and finally you're like well I don't care if I get the negative points I want the points from the candy also very nice production like I said love the artwork so this is one I would recommend for families I give it a, a 7 out of 10 for you know for kids that's kind of my my option on this one but it's one that I think they'll enjoy a lot so that's ghost love candy too I'm Tom Vassell you've been watching the Dice Tower